Hey guys, I'm Renato with ProBeats and today I want to talk to you about Reverb. Earlier this week I've asked a question over the community tab here on YouTube. What are the things you struggle the most when mixing? And I've got a lot of answers just like this one. Or this one. This one. And I was a bit surprised because, believe it or not, I struggle with reverb too. So in today's video, I want to show you a few techniques that I use when mixing with reverb. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, hit that like button, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Let's get into it. So the first question that I want to answer is how many reverb plugins do I actually need for uh, mixing vocals? The answer for that is pretty simple. I think that you can achieve really amazing mixes by using just one reverb. My go-to reverb for that is Valhalla Vintage Verb. I think that this is a pretty complete package. As you can see, it has a lot of different modes from halls to plates to rooms. So this plugin covers pretty much the entire spectrum. I highly recommend starting with just one reverb, learn it, know exactly what each control does, know exactly how the reverb sounds, and from there you can purchase other different plugins. So you can mix with just one plugin that's no issue at all i own more than three plugins but that's because each plugin has a different character that's only important when you already know how to use reverbs and how to make them fit in the track three different types of reverb plate room and hall now i want to show you an example on how they sound fell out of love fell out of love fell out of love you fell out of love, fell out of love, fell out of love You fell out of love, girl Fell out, fell out You fell out, fell, fell out Now I Fell out of love, fell out of love, fell out of love Fell out of love, fell out of love, fell out of love You fell out of love, fell out of love, fell out of love You fell out of love, girl So these are the three types of reverbs in context and how they sound on these specific vocals. Now let's talk how I set up a reverb when I start mixing a song. For me, the setup process is pretty easy and it's usually the same throughout all my mixes. And that starts with adding a reverb as a send on the actual vocal, listening to the vocals and listening to the song in context, trying to get a feel for what will work best. A long reverb, a short reverb, a dark reverb, a bright reverb. And after I have some sort of idea of what I want, I try and find a preset that sounds pretty close to what I have in mind. For example, on this vocal, let's try and find a hole. Because for this vocal, I want something wide, I want something big, I want something a bit dark, and I want something with a lot of character. Let's go through the holes uh, presets. You fell out of love, fell out of love, fell out of love. You fell out of love, girl. Fell out, fell out. You fell out, fell out. Okay, so I like this aerial hole. I think the, the length of it and the feel of it is pretty nice, but I want it a bit darker. And with the Valhalla Vintage Verb, you have this high cut EQ. I just make it darker right from the get go. Now that I have the basic starting point for my reverb, let me show you how I set it up. 
the principle is pretty easy play the track start with no reverb bring it up and when you start hearing it bring it back down That's how I usually set up my main reverb, the reverb that I want to be present throughout the song, the reverb that adds space around the vocals. This principle is pretty easy and it never fails because if you start hearing the reverb, then the reverb is a bit too much. It overpowers the song. Now I want to talk to you about processing your reverb because I think this is the part where you can make or break a reverb sound. This is the part where you add some different spices to your reverbs, you control your reverbs and what I mean by processing is EQ, compression, docking compression, saturation, flangers, character, I mean widening and stereo manipulation and I want to give you a few examples. One of the things that I do most of the time with my reverb and that I have present in all my templates is a Pro-Q3 from a Fab Filter before or after the reverb and that's because I want to control it and I think with busy tracks you need to be careful about the frequencies that you take up with reverb because things can get muddy pretty pretty fast. One technique that you can use is filtering the vocals before hitting the reverb and you can do that by adding an EQ before your reverb. Something like that so only the filtered vocals are hitting the reverb. You will not get really strong uh, sibilance in your reverb. You can use the EQ before or after the reverb. What I've noticed by using the reverb before, the reverb sounds a bit more natural. When you're using the EQ after the reverb, the reverb will sound a bit more processed, a bit more unnatural, but in the mix you will not notice it. Sometimes I use an EQ before and an EQ after. Let's say that I wanna clean some pesky nasty resonance after. Another cool technique that you can use is to compress your reverbs. That will give them more body, that will give them more character and the reverb will be really consistent. One uh, plugin that you can use to do it is the MV2 from Waves, bringing the low level up. You fell out of love, girl. Fell out, fell out. Now let's talk about sidechain compression or docking your reverbs. The technique is pretty simple. You just add a compressor that has sidechain function on the reverb and you use your vocals to trigger that compressor. For this technique, you can use your stock compressor or you can use things that are a bit more advanced like the smart comp or the suit. Let's uh, go with the stock compressor for this one. You just activate the sidechain, you just send the vocals to the compressor and now sidechain is activated. Every single time the vocals are playing, the compressor will dock the reverb. Where well, you can keep the reverb pretty big, but you can take it out of the way of the vocals. If I love, fell, fell out, now I'm gone, now I'm gone, yeah. don't sing the song. Since you fell out of love, fell out of love, oh. fell out of love, 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 fell out of love. 
So you can create some pretty interesting results by using a sidechain uh, compression, compressing your reverb every single time the vocals are playing. You can use a compressor that can allow you to have the release time synced to the BPM of the song. That way the reverb will breathe more natural in sync with the BPM and the flow of the track. Another thing that you can do is add saturation. Let's say that you want your reverb a bit more dirty, you can just add like a tape saturation. You fell out of love, girl. Fell out, fell out. You fell out, fell, fell out. Now I'm gone. Now I'm gone. Yeah. Don't say. So you can add tape saturation. You can add even more aggressive distortion like uh, Saturn from uh, Fab Filter. Let's try that out. Fell out of love. Fell out of love. Fell out of love. Fell out of love. Fell out of love, fell out of love, fell out of love. You fell out of love, fell out of love, fell out of love. Love, you fell out of So now you have a really nasty, really distorted reverb, and that can be a thing that makes your track really special. Of course, after saturating your reverb, you can use a corrective EQ after it to remove those nasty resonant frequencies. Widening, let's go with the S1 imager from Waves. And you can make your reverb really wide out of the speakers. It will sound phasey, but in the mix you can blend it really nice. So that's one way to make your reverb not clash with the main lead vocal. You just move it out of the way and you can even use a mid-side EQ to cut off the mids, something like this. You fell out of love, fell out of love, fell out of love, you fell out of love, girl. And by using a mid-side EQ, you also make your reverb a bit more wider by taking out some nasty frequencies from the middle channel. Now let's talk about another technique that I use all the time, layering your reverbs. By layering your reverbs, I mean using more than one reverb on a single vocal track. And what I usually like to do is use like a really short uh, reverb and a really long one or a really dark one and a really bright one. So they complement each other and you have a lot more control over how your reverb sounds. Let's try it out. A short plate, for example. Fell out of love. Fell out of love. It sounds cool, let's make it a bit wider. And let's make it really, really low in the mix. And the short reverb is just surrounding the vocals, adding a really nice depth to the vocals. This reverb should be really low just for the feel. You're not hearing it, you just feel it. And then you just add a longer reverb, vintage verb, something like this. You fell out of love, 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 fell out of love. So now you have a really short reverb surrounding the vocals and a really nice tail. The beauty about this technique is that you can process them really different and you can bust them together and process them together as a single reverb. Let's try that. We just bust them together and let's say we use a compressor, a CLA-2A for example.
just to blend them together and to achieve a more cohesive result. That's one cool technique that I like to use. So now that we have layering out of the way, I want to talk to you about automating your reverbs. I think that automating your reverbs is really important and I think that you can really improve a mix by doing it. For example, a really cool technique that you can use is use the same reverb for the verse for the hook but make the reverb a bit wider in the hook let's say we have this section right here going into the hook i miss your touch but i know you fell out of love fell out of love fell out of we have this whole reverb right here let's bypass everything and let's make it a bit more fuller let's add like stereo delta for example Put it in write mode, Every day. put it in read mode. Now we are controlling the width of the reverb on this track with stereo delta and you can go from a mono reverb to a big wide reverb in the hook. Had, I miss your touch, but I know you fell out of love. And this is a really cool technique that you can use to create more impact from section to section. You can make the reverbs wider on just specific words. Another technique that you can use for automating your reverb is filtering. For example, you can take the low end out of the reverb when the track is a bit more fuller, busier with a lot of uh, elements. You just take the low end out so you get a much cleaner reverb that doesn't create mud. So now the reverb is fuller with uh, more body on the section where we don't have that much instrumentation. I, had, I miss your touch, but I know you fell out of love. The reverb gets a bit more filtered out when we have the full hook kicking in. So I think it's really important to use automation to let your reverbs breathe throughout the track. If you use these uh, techniques, you will start getting better results when it comes to reverbs. I really hope that with this video you can take your reverb game up a level and that the struggle will become a bit more manageable. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment if you have any questions. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. See you guys really soon. Cheers.